All right, I think we can get started now. Um, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, how to integrate DSP into your Amazon advertising strategy. We are super excited to have everyone here today. Um, with the new year upon us, everyone is you know, looking into new strategies, getting ready uh, for the new year and looking for new opportunities. Um, so especially considering the huge demand in e-commerce and you know everything is pretty much changing. But a few notes before we get started, we are recording this webinar. Um, and it will be available to watch afterwards in case you've uh, in case you've missed anything or if you have to leave early. Um, this will also uh, the deck will also be emailed at, out to everybody with the recording. Um, and we will have a Q and A at the end. So if you have any questions, please drop them into the box below, uh, and we'll get to them at the very end of this webinar. Um, but other than that, I am super excited to have Misha from Packview here and Cohen from Greenhouse. Um, I will hand it over to Misha now to introduce herself. Great. Uh, my name is Misha. I'm currently an account executive at PacView. I previously worked for Amazon Advertising in the display division, uh, so definitely have an understanding of the wide variety of different advertisements that you can employ for your business. And before that, I worked for PepsiCo Frito-Lay as well as Anheuser-Busch, so have experience both in the retail brick and mortar space and then now more in the e-commerce and advertising space. Yeah, and good afternoon from Eindhoven, the Netherlands. Uh, my name is Koen van den Ede. I'm head of marketplaces uh, at Greenhouse and I'm responsible for our marketplace uh, team. I see in both sides of the coin, I worked at a marketplace, uh, the biggest marketplace in the Netherlands, Bold.com, but also at brand side, uh, Dorel. Before we go into our story, I'd like to give you a very short introduction of Greenhouse. Greenhouse is a WPP company and is based in the, in the Netherlands, in Eindhoven. We are a brand and performance agency with over 500 experts in data, media, creative, and tech. So if we look um, at our secret, it is, uh, it is digital magic. We combine media, data, tech, and creative to get the best results for, for our clients. And then before we go into depth uh, on the DSP, I'd like to take a moment to, uh, to paint a picture of the changing market of e-commerce with the big role that the marketplaces has in it. So here are some key figures. Uh, if we look at the changing behavior, we see that 60% of people start searching for products on online marketplaces. So they're already bypassing Google. We also see, this is in German, uh, in German research, that 27% of offline purchases are influenced by Amazon. So not a marketplace by Amazon. So also there is a big on online offline effect. Marketplaces are predominant throughout the entire buying funnel and they are raising the bar, especially on consumer focus. So they are really changing the e-commerce landscape and marketplaces are hot and opportunities are short and long. There are opportunities now, but also um, looking into marketplaces, uh, you become future ready. So then let's have a look at the Amazon DSP and which role it plays in the ecosystem. So the programmatic landscape is rapidly changing. Um, it's becoming more and more um, complex and it's becoming fragmented. We see this for our clients and we see this in multiple markets. Currently, it's still dominated by Facebook and Google, but Amazon is growing really fast and, uh, and it's becoming part of this, uh, this uh, Google and Facebook uh, landscape. And our role, of course, is to navigate our clients in this changing programmatic landscape. So we do this by uh, determining the optimal platform mix throughout our multi-platform strategy. So if we look at the DSP, we look at the different DSPs and try to have the optimum. Uh, if we can go back one slide, sorry. So what, what, if we look at the Amazon DSP, we see a valuable new piece in this multi-platform strategy. Why? Because we see exclusive inventory and devices. Also, they bring very rich first-party audience data. 
Um, and of course, they combine this data with commerce insights. And most of all, it's not limited to retailers and to people that sell on the platform only. Uh, we go into depth more uh, later on. Misha will also go into depth. So if we then look in the offering, it's a video and display offering um, uh, for retail and non-retail clients. And this is an example of the Dutch market, which you can see, and it combines exclusive Amazon inventory. So uh, in the Netherlands, Amazon.nl, but also IMDB with trusted SSPs and publishers. So it's on and off Amazon uh, properties, uh, which you can also use, of course, the rich data of, uh, of Amazon. So if we then see the opportunities for all types of advertisers, um, uh, we look at endemic and non-endemic. Of course, uh, the characteristics change, but it's good to then again emphasize that there are um, chances for endemic and non-endemic advertisers. And what I see most often also here in the market is that DSP plays a role in the awareness phase. And this of course is the case, but also with the risk e-commerce data, it also becomes a sales tool. So the Amazon DSP can help to boost awareness and sales. And that is very important to mention. What I would like to share with you all today are some key, some learnings from our campaigns on the Amazon DSP in the Netherlands. So what I did, I looked at the campaigns and, and I compared it to campaigns on other marketplaces or other e-com channels. And then we see two interesting things. The first one is that we see an improved ROAS in comparison to similar campaigns to other marketplaces. Uh, and we also see a cost per acquisition that on average is 67% lower on Amazon inventory in comparison to more general inventory. If we then also look into the overall strategy, we see that the DSP is not only awareness tool, then again, also sales tool, but you can use it for multiple purposes. So we can use the DSP to improve uh, uh, visibility of our products, um, but also to increase sales. And what is very important also during the holiday season with big traffic data, uh, we can build audiences and we can do retargeting. Before handing it over to Misha for some really great insights and we'll go more into depth on the Amazon DSP, I'd like to end with, uh, with our partnership together with PackView. Integrating PackView gives us a lot of uh, advantages, which I want to highlight three of them. Um, so by automating campaigns and making use of PackView in our Amazon strategy, we save time, especially with rule-based optimization, we can really save time. Also, we can get more detailed insights on our platform behavior. So it's really connecting the dots between advertising and also what is happening organically uh, within the, the platform. And last but not least, of course, it helped us to increase revenue for our clients. So hopefully Misha can give us more insights on, uh, on best practices that you guys can use to really boost your DSP strategies. Great, thanks so much, Cohen. Um, so for a little bit of information, if you haven't heard of PackView, so PackView, currently makes a big splash in search advertising and is now expanding to display as well. So PackView's ranked the number one Amazon advertising um, search SaaS platform. And we also integrate with Walmart, with Instacart, with Critio, and are continuously expanding. And for me, my background comes from display advertising at Amazon. And today I'm hoping that these different information and tips and best practices that you can utilize then for your business. So first of all, why is DSP important and why should you implement it as part of your business strategy? So for a little bit about DSP or demand side platform or other display ads on Amazon, um, in this way, by using these display advertisements, you can use it on amazon.com, on its different mobile apps or other online video channels. So the pricing is based on a dynamic cost per meal or a thousand. And unlike that fixed CPM, there's dynamic pricing, which really allows those advertisers to adjust that bid price and promote highly efficient spending. There's a lot of different differences between search ads and DSP. So in the search ad side of the business, it's more focused on bidding on those keywords and products. 
So it's looking at bidding on something that you're going to type in, maybe a category or a branded keyword right into that search area um, in that Amazon search bar. Um, on the DSP side, it's a little bit different. So you're bidding more on specific audiences. So those maybe who have bought, viewed, searched for a certain product or have a certain lifestyle or in market um, within a certain time frame. So for the different buyers, so on the search ad side, it's looking at those searchers or views of certain products um, advertised primarily just on that search results page and that product detail page. So um, for the DSP side, there's a larger variety where some of it can be on site or O and O, Amazon owned and operated. Some of it's more DSP or demand side platform. So that can be both looking on site, but also off site of Amazon. So if someone had looked for a product on Amazon, maybe they didn't buy it, then they're reading an article on ESPN or MSN.com, then they might get a certain advertisement for that product again that's supposed to motivate them to perhaps click on it, immediately go to that product detail page or a brand store to encourage them to buy it. Um, in the display side, so for search ads, it's just looking at that title and the image. It's not as customizable versus DSP. There's both the static side as well as then the um, custom DEA. So can be a little bit more different than just the title and the image. And then looking at um, some of these other factors as well, you can see that there are some differences if you're familiar with sponsored display versus DSP. So for the sponsored display side, it's based on that price per click versus we mentioned for the DSP ads is that cost per meal. For different ones that are eligible for this DSP. So for sponsored display, it's just focus on those endemic or those companies selling brands on Amazon. But this is a great op opportunity for non-endemic brands to also participate. So insurance companies, telecommunication companies, other entertainment firms that don't sell products directly on Amazon, however, can now get exposure to all those different consumers who are shopping on Amazon every single day. For both of these, um, there are different self-service options. With PacView, we already have opened up DSP reporting in Q1 of next year. We're also opening it up to have full functionality with adding and subtracting different audiences, looking at overlap audiences, and doing some of our other features such as filtering, day parting, and rules automation. Um, there's a lot of control. You have control over those creatives. And then that leads us to what, you know, what's the motivating factor? Why should you look into DSP? A big thing about DSP is it really helps brands with their incrementality. So they're already doing great on their search side of the business. And now they wanna capture those different users and gain more sales and recapturing. So it's kind of like if you're in a brick and mortar store, instead of just focusing on maybe a quick end cap or within your aisle, now it's looking at where are those adjacencies across the store that can still be impactful. So coming from the Frito-Lay days, so instead of just maybe chips in your aisle, Tostito chips, tortilla chips can go really well in the produce section with avocados, tomatoes, and onions where there's guacamole. So it's that same type of idea with the Amazon display side. We're trying to create those adjacencies and get people outside of your normal mindset or category to purchase. So with DSP, there's a lot more variety. So we'll go on the next couple slides and we'll see all the different types, but there's so many different types of advertisements that you can participate in and, and test and learn. Um, there's also retargeting, which really comes to close to the purchase part of that funnel. So a lot of people think of more search as only that area that can really drive conversion, but display can as well. And then there's also more creative freedoms in, um, in those different ad types to, to be a little bit more experimental. And instead of just that product image, can even bring in celebrities and other cool background images, as well as coupons and deals. So how you can complement your ad strategy with DSP. So in that display ads, you can reach a full funnel. And um, at Amazon, we called it fueling the flywheel. So it's looking at how can we cover every single section of that funnel? So starting at awareness where it's the largest, so that's the most amount of people, then consideration, then purchase, and then loyalty. So that's people who've bought it in the past, people who engage and subscribe and save, 
And at each of these different levels, there's different KPIs. And if it's something where you're really focused on ROAS, return on ad spend, that's best suited for purchase. If it's something looking at subscribe and save um, subscriptions, that's something more looking at that loyalty. For consideration, that's focusing a lot on the detailed page view rate. So that's looking at how many people are looking at that specific listing product page on Amazon. And then that click-through rate is the best KPI for awareness, just to see how many people have seen your advertisement and how many people are then engaged to click into it. So next we'll go and we'll look into the different ad types. So for some of these different ad types, as mentioned before, some are right on Amazon, some are also on those third-party exchanges. So looking at those top 100 sites, including things like dictionary.com, Betty Crocker, and there's different options to whitelist or blacklist certain websites and or even certain articles at times if there was something you didn't wanna to be too political and be associated with a lot of presidential articles, there's opportunities for that as well. Um, there's also other published partners, other Kindle advertisements, especially it's called the wake screen, like when you're opening up that Kindle and the advertisement pops up right there. Um, there's different apps, so such as Thursday Night Football, where um, Amazon creates certain partnerships with brands and they actually own that different commercial space. So very similar to on cable, when that channel is having that advertisement space, they can sell to different brands. Um, other ones are for Fire TV or OTT over the top. And in Fire TV, it is the largest nonlinear um, video type of cable online right now, um, reaching over 65 million users um, every month. Um, IMDB is one of the top six streaming websites and provides a lot of free content to users in videos and TV shows, as well as you might normally know IMDB from reading about different actors or actresses, and they've actually expanded beyond that. So that's another great tool especially for beauty companies where they might do a lot of TV advertisements. These are some other great ways to expand in that video mindset. Um, there's also free dive, Alexa, audio ads, homepage takeovers, which can be really powerful and can either have a full page or part of the page can be 100% of the time running or sometimes it's split between a few different brands. Um, Amazon Live, which is a great opportunity to really explain your product, or you can just get more people talking about it. So it's a type of format similar to think if you think of the Oprah show where there she might be talking about her favorite products. And that's the same thing in Amazon Live where around major holidays such as Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, such as Prime Day, such as the holidays, that they'll have those video ads running. It could be an hour long and you can look at that hourly data and see a bump of based on people who have been watching it that day. And the last one is different red carpet events or other events such as Comic-Con and you can be involved as a sponsor of those products and those events and which can really help to grow your business. So there's some different new DSP placement types. So for the HQP or the hyper quick promo, so that's right under the certain advertisement on the product detail page and it's actually to the right. So you can see in that top right image where um, it's to the right of those headphones, the ones right there, that's, it's a very prime spot. And a lot of people, they'll either try to do brand defense where they're putting their own product there so that competitors won't be there. Or in some other ways, it might be of more of trying to get those other competitors as well. And then just on that last slide, there's a couple other ones I'd love to show you. So looking back on a couple slides ago, so a couple of those other ads are for pinpoint ones as well. So those pinpoint ads are um, actually underneath that buy box. And then there's also for, um, then there's also some responsive e-commerce ads, which are up to 20, ASINs per creative. And this is allowing it so that it really prevents out of stock. So you can have a lot of those ASINs at a time. And this has been especially helpful with brands I worked on earlier this year in March during COVID, where there was just so much uncertainty. So at least they could have those other 
ASINs that would become out of stock, they would automatically get paused, they'd get removed from that certain e-commerce ad, and then just those other products were run. So it prevented that wasted ad spend and also prevented them to stop running. Um, so looking at some different Amazon on-site display banners. So you can be familiar with some of these ones like you can see here for Adele's and for Under Armour that right on that thank you page, you can see underneath and it has this ad space. And it can be very beneficial in times because there could be shoppers and they wanna be buying more and it's already targeting people who have that buying mindset. So similar in a store where you're having a certain display after purchase or especially when you're leaving that store. And the cons is that um, because it's coming after purchase, those people who are buying might've been in a rush and they don't have time and might forget to buy those products. So there can be pros and cons of these different ad types. Um, so for the homepage takeovers, this is a very powerful um, type of ad and especially if you can afford it. So not everyone I would think could probably afford these types of prime spots, but this is really an awareness play. It's not trying to really drive conversion or ROAS. It's really looking at those impressions, those click-throughs, and new to brand rates, where it's really focusing on how many new people can we bring to see our product. So the benefits is that you really can get a lot of new customers, and it's really getting the largest amount of exposure. And the only cons is be that it's one of the more pricier um, type of ad types on Amazon. So for Amazon Live, um, it is a hefty fee as well. I know typically the spend minimum might be 500,000 on these type of ads. And for brands, they can create different video segments to really pique the interest and increase sales during major holidays, including the ones we mentioned. So you can see on the right here that there might be um, somebody, they're describing those products, what it looks like, what it feels like, what are the different effects, the features and capabilities, and then that product is featured underneath as well as inside that video advertisement. So for the different audience types, there's a wide variety. So the main ones that are really driving a lot of that conversion are focusing more on retargeting. So those who have viewed, purchased, or searched for your product in the past. And typically for Amazon, most products are getting purchased um, um, repurchased after 30 days. So usually that certain um, product, it lasts those 30 days. And then between basically that 31st day and that 90th day, that's when there's that repurchase. So typically when making those audiences that that's the recommended time period to add it. I know a lot of people also when they're really looking at a segmented approach, what you can actually do is make sure that you're subtracting using and not in those targeting segments. If you're doing larger formats. Like if you're looking at those who might've purchased your product in the last year, then subtracting those who've purchased your product in the last six months or the last three months. And basically that can weed out those duplicate people who might be in both of those categories and make it very specific. So it's more time consuming, but it can be a great way to be able to drive results. Um, the next one that's really drives conversion is looking at that contextual or that browse node targeting. So that's focusing a lot on a certain product. Say you have toothpaste, it's looking at that browse node of toothpaste and of that oral category and making sure that it's targeting anyone who's really looking at that category. So it's kind of like looking at those within your same aisle. So as you can imagine, that drives a lot of that, um, that conversion. So moving up into more of that consideration is looking more into some of those lookalike audiences, looking more at that competitor um, conquesting, which is looking to see for who has purchased, viewed, or searched for your competitors in those last 90 day period of time. And what's great is that by creating those custom built segments um, on Amazon, you can actually look for yourself. And especially if you're showing to your team, this is our major competitor. We've got an X amount of purchases from them, that that can be something really powerful and really prove that your investment um, was powerful. There's also in-market and lifestyle segments. So those are a little bit broader. So more in the consideration and awareness, and that's driving more of those people who are 
maybe in a healthy lifestyle and you might be targeting some certain sports or other types of equipment or workout equipment or healthier foods. There's all these types of audiences on Amazon. And the thing to just watch out for is there can be certain ones such as looking at moms and you think, okay, this is great. This is a really wide category, but the only issue is sometimes when you're using these types of audiences, there's just a huge amount of impressions that are derived from it. And it's, and so some people might be like, why is, why am I not seeing the full conversion? And it's because it's such a large audience. So sometimes what you might want to look into is not just combining that mom audience or mothers, you know, on, on Amazon, but also combining it with those other segments as well. So maybe looking at that healthier in market, but then also looking at that mother group as well, or some things like household or groceries, and, and that can be a great way to add it. So now we'll delve into more of our best practices. So yeah. for our best yeah. practices- Sorry to interrupt yeah. Misha, but, but we get some re, uh, remarks on the chat that the screen is not visible in the right way. So maybe we can do something about that. Okay, okay great. Me, Amanda, can you help with that? Yeah, let me, something might have gone wrong here. We'll try resharing. Does it work now? Can you see the presentation? No, not at the moment. Yeah, it's loading. And now I guess with slideshow, we can show a full screen, maybe. I think my computer has somehow frozen. Um, All right, so while we're figuring that out, I'll just explain some different best practices that we can do um, on Amazon. So in a basic level, I think that people who are really well suited for DSP have really already mastered that search side of the business. And this is an incremental way. And I think from what I've seen is that typically using a different SaaS platform in, or using even just you know normal, um, using a UI outside of that managed one in Amazon because of those different costs for the business is that you'll typically see a higher ROAS when it's more of that SaaS platform. So ways to really focus on ROAS, which I know is everyone's top goal, is using those types of conversion strategies, looking at retargeting. And then when you're focusing more on consideration and awareness, um, that's where you can use more of those broader strategies. So looking at some of it are those different hashed audiences where you can be using information directly from customers. So if you have a certain toothpaste brand and you're on their website and you can capture how many people have viewed that website and what emails that they have put in in the past and ordered from there, what Amazon can do is basically take that data, hashes it up. So it's not using specific names, et cetera, and it's all mashed together. So in that way it's protecting that user's privacy. However, it's able to take those users who have gone on that brand's page in the past. So it's really creating a full funnel system. And another great different best practice is also using Oracle Data Cloud or ODC segments, which those you can either have ones that are pre-populated can create some on your own. It might take one to two to one to two weeks to create with Oracle. But in that way, again, it's in a similar way where it's focusing on that specific category. So let's say you have a certain product and you wanna focus uh, in the cold and flu category. You can create that Oracle data cloud that's focusing on there. And it's really keeping information both on that online format as well as things even in in-store purchases as well. And a major focus of Amazon is also providing a lot of sales lift and brand lift case studies, working with companies like IRI, like Nielsen, like Millward Brown, and proving out the effects of your ROAS, not just on Amazon, but also how it's driving that offline conversion as well. And when looking at 
DSP performance, a lot of people think like, what's better, mobile or desktop? And I do think from my experiences that it is great to have both. Um, but for a little bit of granular info, we have seen greater mobile performance here at PackView for our DSP teams who are currently using the Amazon UI to manage those campaigns. Um, for looking at both static and DA ads, some people think, well, which one's better? What's gonna drive it for my business? So from what I saw at Amazon, it is pretty split. Like both are give pretty equal performance. However, it can differ by brand. So I think it's great to be able to try both and test and learn, especially with different um, deals and different ways to express those coupons. Another great thing to try is subscribe and save ad campaigns. So you can target those who are very loyal to your brand and you can even then target them for other types of products in your line that they might be interested in since they've already shown that they're a loyal subscriber. So some examples of what you can do, you can also combine different deals in your creatives. So you can see on the left-hand side, this is one where it has Miralax. It's showing you can have a healthy to go, save up to 15% with subscribe and save. And this middle one here for Jack and Jill, swimmers diapers, you can see it has a $3 off coupon, really clear, easy to see. Um, on this other one here, you can see Sensodyne did a great job saving 5%. So that's a type of um, just coupon on an everyday item. And this is where it's on a DSP, where it's on the AdAge website. So some of our key takeaways today is we can help you and discuss. You can always feel free to reach out to me or Cohen to help you evaluate your current advertising strategy and see if a DSP is a good fit and really worth the time and investment to learn this type of business. Um, there's different strategies that can help align with your brands. Um, it's great to have both a focus, not just on conversion, but also upper funnel in that a brand awareness and consideration. Um, you can use the demand side platform ads offsite to re-engage shoppers who have been already looking on Amazon. And just one watch out is that sometimes when you're targeting different people and looking at their purchases, there could be some things that are very different than other times of year. So if you're really looking between, especially in the month of December or even November leading into it around the holidays. So you can think that a lot of people are buying products, not just for themselves, but as gifts. So it might be very different. Like I know even for myself, I know somebody who loves cats and I got a couple of cat themed items and mugs and uh, a Christmas sweater, et cetera, on Amazon. I wouldn't normally buy that. And at any time of the year, if I'm getting retargeted on that item, that it might not be fully reflective of what my typical buying patterns are, unlike other times of year. So that's just one other thing to keep in mind. Another thing here is to really evaluate your performance for your whole advertising strategy. And with this way, I think if you're really focused on incrementality and increasing the amount of people who will even come into your aisle instead of just converting in your aisle, I think that display ads are a great avenue for you. And we just wanted to thank you so much for your time. And we're just going to show you a few case studies and then enter in our Q&A. Yes. So for here, um, for PacU, we've helped a major CPG brand in their um, DSP side. We currently are using the Amazon UI and then our DSP reporting. But then in January or uh, through March, we're going to be expanding more in having full access in our SaaS platform. So for here, the problem for this business was it was having some issues, having that premium innovation, really trying to grow their business. And after using just our platform and for a few weeks, there it'll see a 66% increase in category sales growth, a 243 increase in subscribe and save growth, and then a 103% increase in shipped revenue. Another example here was for a pet food brand. So in the first month of using Amazon's DSP um, with our PackView team, they had seen a 28% increase in ad sales, a 250% increase in ROAS, and a 25% year-over-year -year growth in total sales. And now we'd love to open up for questions for everybody. 
Yeah, I see already some questions coming in. So that's uh, that's good and keep them coming. All right, excellent uh, presentation, everybody. So we have one question here. Uh, can you speak on the self-service side for agencies, uh, service clients versus uh, managing or uh, having Amazon manage? Yeah, maybe this for me to answer, Misha? Sure. So if I understand the uh, question correctly, it's the difference between self-service from agency or managed campaigns by Amazon. I think two main characteristics that's, that's different. The first one is that as an agency, we have a DSP seat that offers flexibility where with Amazon, you of course have some thresholds so we can offer, offer some flexibility on budgets, etc. And I think what's also interesting is of course, if you look at um, agency managing the DSP campaigns, it's the fact that we have multiple data sources coming in. So we make the DSP part of an overall strategy uh, and look at, uh, at, at the role Amazon has in comparison to, uh, to other DSP. Does this answer your question? I think that was a good answer. A little to add on that too. Mm -hmm. um, so I had worked on the managed service side at Amazon and it can be great. You're gonna get an opportunity as the first one to be able to test and learn different things. There's a lot of different betas that come out, like even for this, um, for these responsive e-commerce ads that have up to 20 ASINs in a creative and it can rotate, that had first been a beta. And when you're managed service at Amazon, you'll know about those things. However, it comes at a cost where it's gonna be a higher price versus if you go through an agency and that's where it's like, it all depends on how much money you have and if you want to be top of the line for when it comes out to things first. So those are some things to consider if you want to go manage or if you want to go in that agency side. Yep. All right, we have another question here. Do you offer an option to plug in audiences from Facebook? I think that's a question for you, Misha. So for us, I haven't heard of that yet. I think that's something that we can look into. And I think that should work because when you have the different pixel remarketing, which is something that is offered in Amazon DSP, um, as long as you can pixel it on Facebook and get that audiences, I think that's definitely something that's fine. And if it's something you want to reach out to me after, if you do work managed service, you can ask your Amazon account manager or your agency, whatever works best. But I think that that should be able to work. And it's just a tough one, just wondering if there might be any, you know, issues between Google, Facebook and Amazon. And sometimes there might be some restrictions. Awesome. Uh, we, got, we just received one more question here. Have you seen any investments in streaming inventory awareness drivers consistently lower CPA on the search side? So I guess in that question, so for inventory awareness drivers, so I guess is that I know one thing I've been asked and you can clarify if this is correct, where some people are wondering, is there a way that we can dynamically advertise products that might have a lot of inventory and you want to try to get rid of that inventory as much as possible and put it on an advertisement and then hopefully sell through. And I guess, is that the type of question that you're asking? Let's see if we get a response, but I think we'll uh, move on to the next question uh, first. Okay, in that uh, case, just to answer okay. before we move on. So I have been asked that a couple of times. I am not 100% sure if that's something that is able to be done yet. I know in our PathView side that we have a capability where we can pause campaigns um, or I guess those ASINs within those campaigns before they have them. So in that case, like if you have less than two weeks on hand, you don't wanna be wasting that ad spend, you can actually pause that ASIN. So especially if it's then you have your other ASINs flowing into it, you can advertise those instead, instead of wasting ad spend to something that's gonna be going out of stock. Awesome. Um, I think this one might be for you, Cohen, or could be a combination of both. Uh, is the minimum spend for DSP 10,000 for all markets in self-service or only in the U.S.? Yeah, so, so I think it's, it's a very specific question. I'm not aware of all market dynamics. Um, mm -hmm. 
So for me, it's hard to to uh, to answer this. Uh, I'm not sure, Misha, if you can answer on the 10K for the U.S. Yeah, as for the U.S., it is that 10K. I can look into it just to see um, for other markets as well. I know we at PACV work in a few other markets, so we can double check and get back to you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and then uh, another question here um, for Cohen: Which markets, in Europe, do you think will uh, have the most growth, or the most, or the newest ones that uh, are the most open for advertisers? Yeah, so I think that's, a, that's an interesting question. If you look at Amazon specifically, uh, we do see some mature markets in in Europe, like Germany, like the UK, but also uh, some new enterings. Of course, um, uh, the Netherlands where the DSP uh, advertising platform opened two months ago, uh, but also, of course, uh, Amazon Sweden launched. So I expect a lot of uh, growth uh, there. On the other hand, also in Europe, we do have some very strong local players, which are also uh, investing heavily on their uh, media capabilities. So I do expect some changes in the, in the coming years uh, in, in Europe. So it will be an interesting time. Mm -hmm. All right, an exciting time. So many new marketplaces launching. Uh, it seems like every other month these days. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We have one here uh, for you, Misha. Which advertisers are best suited to DSP? Yeah, um, so that's an interesting question. So all advertisers can be suited, but I think it's once you're pretty established and you do already have your search in place, you're seeing that ROAS to be able to fund DSP and a fund that more awareness and consideration to lead more to even more conversions. So what's great with DSP is it can be both for that endemic and that non-endemic. So a lot of people just think of Amazon as a place to sell items, but it's also a great spot for non-endemic. So there's a lot of companies that are already working with Amazon, like a Geico, like a Verizon, and that are advertising on that, especially that homepage or on some left side when you are searching and you do pull up products that you're looking for. And the reason that that's a prime spot is that people read from left to right. So it's on purpose that all these ads are on the left side of Amazon's pages when you search. So this can be a great opportunity for all those clients. They're already seeing increases in their business and they want to now focus on getting more, more people into their funnel, attracting a wider audience than those just in their buying market who are going to be searching specifically for their item. Mm -hmm. all right, excellent. I think we might have uh, made it through all of the questions here. Um, so unless anyone has any additional questions, um, you have a few more minutes to, uh, to add them, but um, it looks like we're about out of time. If you guys, once again, if you have any additional questions, you can always get in contact with either Misha Cohen or anyone here at the PacView team. Um, this will be sent out to everybody after this webinar, uh, as well as the deck, so you can have a look um, and then rewatch it, unless just in case you've missed anything. Um, so yeah, in case uh, anyone has anything else, I think that is it for today. Um, and we'll also be hosting another webinar tomorrow to go over Cyber5 performance results. So if you guys are interested, uh, you can visit uh, packview.com slash webinars and sign up for that. Um, so yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.